You can imagine it like this, like you come into God's office. Let's pretend God has an office. You come into God's office and you're reading off your resume of all the things you pulled off in life. God, I'm in church most Sundays. I pray regularly. I read my Bible at home. I try to raise my kids in the faith. I give my offerings. I'm generally pretty good to my neighbor. You know what? I'm not even getting into all this political stuff on one side or the left. I'm trying to be balanced. You can imagine God, he's writing down notes. He's like, okay, mm mm-hmm, yeah, mm mm-hmm. And yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. You finish, and then he, he sits back in his chair, and he says, well, okay, based on the evidence, I'm going to have to kill Jesus. Because no matter what good you've done in your life, it's not enough. And that's offensive. Because some of us think we're doing pretty well. I'm tempted to think that. Like, my life, by the average Canadian standards, looked pretty good. I haven't really royally messed it up in any ways that are visible. But God says, the cross says, that's not enough. It will never be enough. But can I give you the the beautiful implication of that? The beautiful implication of the fact that what you're doing will never be enough is that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to say it one more time because I think you need to get it through your skulls. You don't have to do anything. You're completely free. It is finished means it's finished. You're already a finished product. No amount of striving, no amount of progressing, no amount of growth, no amount of getting better at anything is going to amount to anything. And so you don't have to do anything. You want me to get really up in your pious personal space? You don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to pray. You don't have to come to church. You don't have to be good to your neighbor. You don't have to raise your kids in the faith. You don't have to do anything. Because it's already done. Brothers and sisters, your schedule is free. So what are you going to do now? I hope you're not going to go back to slaving away at some job that's going to give you a pitiful amount of money compared to the riches of heaven. I hope you're not going to go back to worrying about what other people think about you when the God of the universe was willing to put his life on the line for you. I hope you're not going to go back to to taking your time to worry about your health or whatever the next thing is that's going to threaten our society. When God has promised, I'm either going to let you live by protecting you from everything on this earth, or I'm going to let you die so that you can come be with me in heaven and enjoy all this good stuff, and that's totally on me. I get to decide. No virus, no mandates, nobody makes that decision except me. Brothers and sisters, you are free. So don't go back to that stuff. Now, am I saying that you should quit your job and you should leave your house and you should not care about what's going on in the world? No, you should care about those things. But man, do not let those things define you. Do not let those things be the things you run to to be valuable, to feel like you matter. Because it's already done for you. You don't have to do anything. 